Welcome back to Duckman Cycles and VW Garage. I'm your host, the Duckman. Haha! <laughs> We're back today to review a product, and this such product comes from Hyperlite. Now, we don't usually review a product on this channel unless I've either determined that it's really good for me or it somehow enhances what I do here on this channel, and this lighting is exactly that. I was actually going to install some lighting outside of my garage here somewhat recently, and I don't know, the Hyperlite people must have read my mind because I was looking at pulling some wires through the attic and getting some wires hooked up just right out here. And no sooner they contacted me and they said, um, would you like to review our product? And I said, well, absolutely, yes. So they sent me out three of these. We are going to do an unboxing here and then we're gonna install it and test it. All right. All right, well, it's a box. We have uh, some styrofoam, some more styrofoam, and then we have the light itself. There it is. Now you probably saw me open up this on a mail call video with B, not but a couple weeks ago. Have everything that you need, but this is it here. Look at that. That is a beast. It is a beast. And this goes up on a wall somewhere up high, and it could probably light up my entire front yard. So I might stick one on the front, one on the side where I have no lighting. And then I'm thinking I'll put one up here in the garage tent and set that one up as an appliance rather than a fixture. Here's our Hyperlight. Now this light is all LEDs. It uses about one amp of power or about 120 watts, which is about the same amount of power as your PlayStation. Now think about that for a second. <laughs> We're gonna bust this sucker open and see what's inside of it in just a second. Otherwise included in the box, looks like we have an instruction manual, a uh, warranty or service card, warranty information and then lastly we have some screws some wire nuts and an allen key well that's got to be the allen key that opens this up how about that that's how it's done all right this has a, uh, a nice hinged design the whole LED thing disconnects and it can be removed I wonder if the panel is replaceable interesting it unbolts, surely easy enough. Looks like there's a whole bunch of Allen keys the whole way around it. Inside here we have our LED driver. It's kind of like a ballast for an incandescent bulb, except this is a little more sophisticated than that as far as what it does. This also has a, uh, oh, looks like it has some dimming capabilities. I'll have to check the schematic as to what it's for. But it also has a light sensor, a photo sensor on the top here. And what that does is it makes the light come on when it's dark outside. So I think that's a very, very convenient and nice feature. Since, of course, you're not going to need the light during the day, right? <laughs> as far as mounting is concerned, it looks like we have, um, well, no mounting holes. No mounting holes or mechanisms. It looks like everything we have to do is drill out our own. I think I know where we're going to mount it, so what we're going to do is drill to the same width as my lag anchors that I have in the mortar between the bricks here at home. And we'll get the sucker mounted up where I used to have a sconce. So that's where we're going to set up the first one. And well, it looks like a pretty robust unit. It's not plastic, not plastic, it is metal. I don't know what kind of metal it is. It's not magnetic except for where the screws are at. And how about the front half? Also not magnetic. So it's probably either some kind of alloy or perhaps um, zinc, AKA pop metal. But nonetheless, it's, it's a nice cast piece. It's not some formed sheet metal garbage, it's actually a really nice component. All right, well, let's go ahead and get these suckers installed and let's see how bright they get. So I think all I need to do is hook up our power wires, which is what this is here. Must be installed with accordance to the applicable installation code by a person familiar with the construction and operation of the product. I'm gonna say that I am familiar. While I'm not a professional electrician, I think I do know what I'm doing. Uh, for those of you out there that are professional electricians, like uh, VW Jawbreaker, Gary, <laughs> you're probably gonna razz me at some point. I don't know about you, but I'm a little excited to see this thing light up, so we're gonna do a bench test on it. Get this here opened up. Run the wire right through the side of it. Yes, it's currently unplugged. See that? Run these through here. Our wires. 
wires together. Now for a bench test, you don't need to hook up the ground, but if I don't do it, somebody will cry bloody murder. So let's do it anyway. <laughs> Gotta love the internet. All right, there we are. Close this back up. All right. Plug us in here. And then I have it on a switch for remote. Oh my God, that's bright. Wow, <laughs> that is intense. That is incredible. The light is actually warm coming off of it. Well, there it is, the light sensor. Yeah, the light sensor's coming on and off because it's still daylight out here right now. Or maybe it shut itself off, I don't know. I can actually feel the intensity of the light coming off of it. It does make a little bit of warmth, which is kind of a surprise from LEDs. All right, there it is off. Shield a little light sensor, and it comes back on again. Release, and it doesn't turn itself off automatically because in case somebody, let's say, were to drive past and their headlights were to shine into the sensor, it would turn it off and on and off repeatedly. So it does have a little bit of a, um, uh, a delay on it before it shuts itself off. But anyway, um, yeah, that's how it works. Pretty clever. All right, well, let's uh, see if we can get some of these hooked up. But anyway, this is what we've got. Looks like there's a little cap in the back here that's gonna have to come out. There we go. And that's where our wires are gonna go through. Now, you don't just feed the wires through the hull. It's not that simple. You need to put a strain relief in there, and the strain relief was not included with this unit. So, you know, it's just a little trip over to hardware store if you don't happen to already have some, which, of course, I do. So, we'll just get that sucker threaded right into there. Get us set up and just about ready to go. Now I've already got holes on my wall, so we're going to figure out approximately where it's going to go, and uh, we're going to drill in the same spot. And so it looks like it has no other provisions for mounting other than drilling some holes. You know, the screws that came with the kit looks like it would be something that would also stand off on the inside, so I think what we're going to do is we're just going to make a small modification in here. Back side, come around this way. Gasket's coming off, so let's just get it out of the way so we don't ruin it. Right Deep bird the back. Convenient level for when we mount it. How about that? It looks like a really, really solid unit. It's not plastic, it's not made from stamped sheet metal. This is actually some kind of cast, as I said, alloy or zinc or pop metal. I mean, it's rigid too. I mean, it's not flexible at all. All right, let's go ahead and get the sucker mounted up. Just for the safety and sanity of everybody else watching the video, yes, I have checked the wire for power and there's none. You know, the great thing about being tall is you can reach this stuff without needing a step ladder. <laughs> we feed our wires through the back. As you saw, we already tested them to make sure that they're not alive. Got my lag bolts here. I run them right into the case. Trying to do this all in one motion. So that way I look as professional as possible here. Might not wind up. I miss the hole. I hate when that happens. There we go. I probably shouldn't have snugged them up quite yet. Eh, they're not tight all the way yet. I'm gonna adjust so that way that level, which is actually level with my mortar in the brick, so we're good. Now typically, and this is the wrong kind of connection, you're not supposed to put a braided wire against a solid wire. 
but we're doing it here in this case anyway just for demonstration. I'm going to come back later and put the proper connectors on here. It's usually what you find in most of the fixtures that you buy, but yeah, you're technically not supposed to. Although I guess it is, it's soldered, which makes it solid. twisting these things together with a wire nut. Okay, we got everything out of the way. Move this up a little bit. We're gonna tighten these down. It's one of those times it'd be nice to use a power tool, but one isn't convenient right this second. This door is neatly hinged. That's actually the entire bulb assembly, lens, everything. We get this wonderful gasket that goes around the outside. finished product. Not bad. Not bad at all. You almost can't even tell it's really there. It's not too obvious. It's not ugly. It's not big, unusual, or weird. Let's go ahead and turn that power on and see what happens. The big question is just how bright is this guy? I have a remote control. Boop. And it's extremely intense. In fact, looking at the ground, I can actually see it casting a shadow even though it's daylight out. So this thing is incredibly bright. Now you notice it just went out. That's because the light sensor is currently active and it does notice that it's daytime. But there's one way to defeat that, a real easy way, and you can rewire it so it's permanently on using the LED driver inside. There's instructions inside the instruction manual for that. Or if you just like things low tech, just put a little bottle cap over the top of it. I need to reach it. It should come right on. There it is. If I take that off, it should go back out again because it's daylight. It has a couple second delay on it, I guess, so it doesn't rapidly turn on and off every time that somebody, you know, drives past and their headlights shine onto it and causes it to go back out. But yeah, it does work, so off, back on again. It's working. Can't wait till it gets dark so we can try the rest. Well, we're going to go ahead and install the rest of them, and I'm going to show you how I have them set up. Well, I suppose the big question is, what do they look like at night? I'm out here cleaning up after working on Triple E a little bit. And as you know, I put these guys on a remote control, so here's number one. Woo! It's practically daylight out here. <laughs> we put number two up here on the side yard, so that way I can walk through the side yard or even pull in. Of course, I got this all on a nice remote control. And then lastly, number three is in the back. Okay, come on remote. There it is. This one I set up as an appliance, so I just simply have a line cord connected to it. I plan on putting an electrical outlet somewhere in the corner of the shed over here, so I'll dig up a little trench and run the wires to it, but there's the light. I mean, this thing is incredibly bright. And when I turn back around the other way, I mean, it just looks like, like daylight. I mean, it's whiter than daylight, but it's, it's so bright. I have no problem working under this light. In fact, they're so bright, it'll probably drive my neighbors a little crazy. I might put a little shade up to direct the light in the directions that I want it to go in, but nonetheless, these things are awesome. I mean, just look at that. That is just incredible. <laughs> I have no problem coming out here and cleaning up my stuff and seeing things, you know, I don't drop a screw and not be able to find it kind of thing. Uh, these lights are very bright. You can't beat them, that's from Hyperlight. Just wonderful, brilliant product. And there they are, one, two, three, you can see all my lights. Let's shut off number one. There we go, off number two. And then lastly, we got off number three. All right, and it's pitch black. This just goes to show how dark it actually is. Street lights out of here aren't half bad, 
but when it comes to working out here, <laughs> there's just no way. This thing is just so much better. If you're interested in one of these Hyperlite LED Wall Pack Moon Series lights, I recommend them highly. There are discount codes below in the video description for either Amazon or the Hyperlite website. You'll also find the links to get there. But act quickly, the codes are time sensitive and you'll miss your opportunity for a discount on these brilliant lights. Special thanks again to Hyperlite for sending me these lights. I'm going to be using these for years to come and when I move to the bigger shop space you bet they're going to come with me. I might even get a few more. So thanks everyone for watching. We'll see you on the next go round. In fact, I can see all the imperfections. Well, I guess they're not imperfections, just dirt. Dirt sitting on the paint, stuff I never would have noticed before. <laughs> that was a bug. <laughs> wow. Brighter than daylight. Just maybe.